One day I was in the woods and I was talking to a dog skull. Behold, the solemn dog skull whispered to me the tale of the hallowed Canaan. In the musty annals of history, a dashing French local historian unearthed a fable from the dusty archives. It spoke of St. Dinnefort, an esteemed figure venerated in the historic region of Doms, north of Lyon and eastern France. This captivating chronicle was chronicled by none other than Teen de Bourbon, a medieval Dominican friar with an insatiable wanderlust. He traversed the vast expanse of France, meticulously documenting saints, discerning between Catholic customs and pagan heresy. Once upon a time, a noble knight and esteemed lord graced the land. He possessed a cherished wife, a sprightly son, and his dearest companion in a fort a fiercely lulled dog, and the epitome of Canaan excellence. One fateful day, the gallant knight set off on a grand hunting escapade, or perchance, a noble crusade called his name. Oh, indeed. It was a crusade, leaving his faithful hound in charge of safeguarding his son's abode. The knight embarked on his valiant mission. Upon his triumphant return, the knight hastened to check on his dear offspring. To his dismay, he discovered a toppled cradle and a chamber awash with crimson. Yet amidst the ghastly scene stood his low hound, his visage besmired by a frightful mask of blood. Consumed by rage, the knight succumbed to his wrath and dispatched his faithful companion oblivious to the truth that lay concealed. But lo and behold, a serpent's lifeless form unveiled itself before the knight's eyes. And there, untouched by harm, rested his eldest son, a miracle bestowed by the unwavering devotion of Guinefort. Thus, the valiant Guinefort, ever vigilant, had sheathed the boy from peril. Overwhelmed by remorse, the knight wept bitterly, organizing a grandee's funeral and erecting a solemn gravestone to honor his fallen Canaan comrade. Our Dominican scholar Etienne de Bourbon heard the story from the locals. He was also told that the local women flocking to the stone, beseeching the intercession of Saint Guinefort when plagued by barrenness or ailing children. Naturally, Hureton branded this burgeoning veneration as pagan heresy, promptly decrying its prohibition. Forthwith, he contended that dogs lack souls and, therefore, handed vacate for us before the heavenly throne of Jesus. Alas, how mistaken he was. Yet, as the inns passed, the sacred cult of Guinefort the dog endured, transcending the barriers of time. In the 19th century, women yearning for mother sought solace at the hallowed stone. Their hopes entwined with its ancient aura. As the early 20th century dawned, these mystical sites became revered sanctums, enshrined with reverence and awe. Alas, as the latter half of the 20th century unfurled its modern marvels, Women sought medical intervention and bustling urban centers, leading to the gradual demise of this wondrous myth before our very eyes. Thus concluded the tale of the faithful hound, the guardian of children fading into the annals of history. The end. <laughs>